managing money as a couple is very hard, believe it or not. I won't really just have to believe it because if you guys know something, it's that 50% of people that get married usually end in a divorce because of usually financial reasons. So managing money and finance and divorces and marriage is a very complicated topic when you put all those things together in one pot and just mix it around without knowing what you're doing. So it's very important you understand exactly how to manage your money while you're with a person or you're trying to build a family, whatever you're trying to do, okay? So the first thing is this, guys. In this video, I'm going to show you guys exactly three ways to actually manage your money with your couple, your soulmate, whatever they are. I'm going to show you guys three ways to actually manage it. And here's the thing, guys. When I first started dating my girlfriend, like back in like, um, what is it, like um, 2015, 2014, um, mid-April? Well, when I dated her back then, I used all three of these methods from the first year to the second year to the third year. And I can tell you something. Not all of these methods right here are what's best, okay? They all have their downfalls, they all have their cons, but although they do have their cons, it's still better than just ignoring the problem and not even doing anything about it. Because I have friends that have been dating for the past seven years, but it's not really like dating, but it's just like, okay, we live together, and that's about it. We don't talk about finance. We don't talk about anything. You do what you do. I do what I do. I don't care about anything else, okay? Let's just do that. And in reality, sometimes, most of the time, those relationships end in what? In in a divorce, you know, they, they break up. It doesn't work out. Why? Because finance is such a big issue and people just feel like, you know, ignoring it, the big elephant in the room is just better than, you know, trying to tackle it and trying to get it out the room, okay? Just to clarify that. Now, guys, if you guys don't know me, my name is Tiny Bryson. I'm an accountant. I post videos here every single day. So, try to the channel with the notification bell so you get notified every time I post a new video, which, again, is every single day. Hit the like button while you're at it. Really appreciate it. And I want to ask you guys a question. Comment down below, yes, 50 if you know anyone that's gotten a divorce or broken up or whatever it is because of finances because i want to know how many people out there actually have seen it with their own eyes what actually happens when people don't talk about finance in a relationship comment down below let me know again comment yes 50 if you know anyone that has been broken up because of finances or has been divorced because of it okay comment down below let me know so let's jump in straight into the video and the first thing i want to break down guys is well why is it so important to talk about finance tommy what do you think about it and the answer is this guys when i was growing up as a kid you know like you know like mid like 10 to 14 years old most important part of my life um, when I was growing up, all I heard was, you know, Tommy, whenever you go out there looking for a partner, don't worry about anything. Just worry about them. Don't focus on money. Don't focus on anything. And although that is true, you don't want to be a gold digger, it's still kind of like avoiding the entire issue of finance. Now, here's why. Because those same people that would give me advice about money, well, they would turn around and be like complaining about bills and things going not correctly. And, oh, my gosh, my car payment. Oh, my gosh, we can't afford the house. Like, all these things were going on. So they're telling me, like, hey, don't worry about money. But obviously, money puts a lot of stress on relationships, so just ignoring that problem, it doesn't make it go away, because you still have to pay the bills, you, have to, you still have to pay the credit cards, you still have to worry about all these things. So, ignoring this problem, or listening to people saying, oh, you know, just don't pay attention to it, no, it doesn't work, okay? You have to make sure you actually understand how it works, so then you can actually, you know, tackle it and try to fix it. So, comment down below, yes and a dollar sign if you agree that money is important in a relationship or comment down below no and a dollar sign if you think that it's not important now here here hear me out guys i'm not saying to go out there and look for people just for money or to go on a date and be like hey you know how much money do you make hey like how much money do you want to save you know, you know that's kind of weird you no know? but i'm saying this money is important because it puts a lot of stress or relieves a lot of stress in a relationship, okay? But it can also be a double-edged sword also. I'll explain that on later on in the video. Now, what are these three ways to actually manage money as a couple and how can I actually work them into my own relationship? Now, the answer is this, guys. I'm going to tell you right now. But I have to be honest. Not all these ways are optimal. Not all these ways are like the best. So I'm going to start from worst to best. But usually, you can find one of these ways to actually manage your own money. But in reality, I think the best one, which is the last one, is actually the best to actually stick around for that. Now, the first one is basically non-existent, meaning you don't even talk about money whatsoever. And this only works, for example, say, for example, I have a girlfriend, and she works all day, and she manages everything, and I take care of the kids. Well, in reality, we don't have to talk about money because she manages everything, and we also have like a fun. So, hear me out. It only works when you have like a main breadwinner and you don't really want to talk about anything, but it can still work really good. But here's the problem with that, guys. I remember this one story. It was an old lady and the old lady never spoke to her husband about money or anything like that. And he managed everything. And when he passed away and he left her alone, she was like, you know, in her in her mid 70s. Well, now she was kind of lost because she didn't know how to deal with anything. So that could be like a crippling moment when you have someone manage everything to now you don't know how to manage anything after they're gone. On top of that, 
I know a lot of stories out there where you have one partner that makes all the money and one partner doesn't make any money whatsoever. And here's what happens. Usually you have like a power issue here where the person that makes the most money here and the person doesn't make any money whatsoever is kind of like under control by this person right here. And that's very bad. You know, you don't want to be controlled by one person because you're relying on them so much for everything. So it's kind of like a power struggle and I don't really appreciate this one at all. So for example, if I work and I make a lot of money and my girlfriend doesn't do anything whatsoever and she's at home, if I was like a bad boyfriend, I could be like, oh, you know, I make all the money. You have to do what I do, you know? So that can be a very bad thing when you have someone that wants to be controlling over you. And in reality, they can't be controlling because, hey, they pay the rent. If you don't like, do what they say, then then you don't get any, like, you know, you know, it's kind of weird. It's a very weird situation and you don't want to be in it. You don't want to be dependent on anyone whatsoever for anything. You just want to be with that person because you want to be, but not because of financial issues. So when it comes to non-existence, I really don't recommend this one, but it can be efficient if you live back in like 1950s or like the 1920s. But for right now, today's era, I don't really recommend it whatsoever. <laughs> now, the second way that she manage your money with her couple is actually through selective conversation and selective finance. So what do I mean by this? Well, selective means when you actually pick what you want and what you don't want. So the good is this, you know, there's actually no good here because you're basically saying this, you know, I'll talk to you about this type of finance here, but I won't tell you the rest of the story. So you're basically stuck between a place where, hey, I know some information, but I don't know everything else. And here's the situation, guys. I know this one couple, they're friends of mine, actually, and they basically talk about almost everything, but they don't talk about everything. So what I mean is this, right? The lady, she comes together with her husband every now and then to talk about one thing, which is bills. Like what bills are we paying? Okay, great. The rest of the money, they don't talk about it whatsoever. You do you, I do me. Don't worry about what I do with my money. You don't worry about what you do with your money, right? That's what they do. So they only come together for one thing to pay the bills. And then everything else is separate. Now, what does this happen? It means as a couple, you're going to be working with like half the information because you're not really working together fully. So when it comes to this one, it's kind of like selectively, you know, like for example, when I first started dating my girlfriend, we were like, okay, I'll talk to you about this, but then everything else over here, I'm just going to manage that myself. You don't have to worry about it. Okay. And that's kind of good. But in reality, it's, it's not good whatsoever because you're dealing with someone that doesn't have the entire picture. Thus, they can't really work with you all the way because they don't really understand anything that's going on. So having selective finance or selective like conversations, is not really good. You want to make sure your person has the full picture of everything rather than just like, okay, here's a mini picture here. So here's what I do. Here's what you do. Don't worry about me. No, you don't want to be that person. You kind of want to be all together and kind of like have the entire picture when it comes to this. Now, the third way, which is my favorite, by the way, so if you made it all the way here, congrats. And here it is, guys. It's actually actively managing conversations and also your finances. So here's how this works, guys. The good is this. You basically manage everything with this couple, with this person, your soulmate, and you tell them everything about your finance. For example, I want to save this money. Let's work together to actually actively like save for this or like invest into this. And you work together. You talk about everything, including bills, the bad, the good, and you try to come together and find solutions. So the, here's the thing. You might have problems where, hey, we can't afford this. We can't afford that. Well, you come together, you talk about it, but not just talk about it. We actually try to find a solution for it and try to actually innovate out of it. Okay. So for example, if I have a problem where, hey, you know, we can't afford this um, membership anymore. We need to do something about it. Well, okay, let's talk about it and let's try to find a solution to it so then we don't have to worry about it. So basically, this is way more better than having to like ignore the entire issue, just like talk about certain issues because now you have the entire picture here and you can actually manage it to the best of your abilities. Now, here's the bad to this, but it's not really that bad, but it's kind of like a, like a stepping stone, you know? So for example, you might not want to be telling someone all your finances. You don't know, you might not even trust them yet, but in reality, and that's fine, by the way, you don't have to do this like ASAP. You can just like start at like little steps here and there. But here's my thing. Once you get into this habit, it's way more better. And here's why, because it is hard to kind of be like transparent and tell someone everything about you and like what your goals are, because you want to make sure you're with the right person. And the next thing you know, that person is only interested with you just for money. But if they are, then it doesn't really matter. You know, so if you tell somebody something and all they care about is money, then it's time for you to walk away from that relationship because one, you're wasting their time. And then two, you're wasting your time also. So my thing is this, once you get into this habit of talking about everything, when it comes to finance, when it comes to making more money, when it comes to investments, when it comes to everything on this, then you don't have to be that old lady that when your husband passes away, you're like, okay, what do I do now? You know, I'm stuck. I don't know anything here. Or you don't have to be that person. It's like, okay, you know, that's all about this, but not like everything else. No, you have the full picture here and you can actually manage everything. So this is by far my favorite way, but it's one of the hardest ways because you have to be honest 
with yourself first and then with that person second. So comment down below and let me know which one of these ways is your favorite. Is it actively? Is it non-existent or is it just selective on finance talk okay comment down below let me know and here's a little story to kind of show you exactly how i dealt through all these little stages in my relationship with my girlfriend that i'm still with up to today for the past like almost four years and here's the answer guys um when i first started dating my girlfriend it was basically non-existent we just go on dates we wouldn't talk about finance or anything like that and it wasn't really important at least back then i didn't think that at all and eventually you know we went on dates all the time but then it became like, hey, we don't have money for this. We don't have money for that. What's going on? Well, what do you mean you got into credit card debt? What do you mean you did this? You know, so it became like, you know, the more you start dating someone, the more you start caring about them in full and not just on a superficial level. So you start caring more about everything that you're doing with their finances. So for example, I started getting into debt. She started getting into debt also. And I was like, okay, what are we doing here? We're not talking about anything. Now, what can we do to actually get out of this, right? Now, this is where we move from, you know, non-existent to selective. So we started talking about debt. I started talking like, hey, you know, you have debt here, I have debt here, what can we do to eliminate this? This is great, you know, we, let's fix this, let's fix that. But we didn't really talk about, well, you know, I have extra money at the end of the month, I do whatever I want with it, doesn't really matter, it's none of your business, you know? It was kind of like that, but not really like that, you know? But here's my thing, then we moved into now where we're actually talking about everything, where I'm telling her like, hey, you know, I want to do this, she's telling me I want to do this, you know? And everything is kind of like together in a way like, hey, we don't have any financial issues anymore because... By the way, I even have a plan in case anything happens to me that my girlfriend is like, you know, knows exactly what to do with all the money. Because right now we have a joint account and we're actually saving up together. By the way, this takes massive trust, okay? It's not that simple to actually, you know, just trust someone and be like, okay, let's make a joint account. Because sometimes you might be with someone, but you don't really trust them and you make a joint account. And the next thing you know, oh, that person just went to Hawaii and you're here and, you know, all the money is, is gone, you know? So you have to trust that person a lot. So, for example, right now... We're working together to actually buy a property and actually invest more money together. And there you go, guys. Those are the three ways you can actually manage your relationship, finances, and actually make sure everything is kind of like well balanced out. Now, I do want to clarify something. Don't start out being, being like, oh, my gosh, how much money do you make? What do you want? Like, I hate those conversations when you talk to someone and they're like, oh, how much money do you make? What are your five years goals? Like, like just shut up. I don't care about that. Like, let's just have a conversation, you know? So here's my thing. Make sure you talk about your finances with your couple. It's very important. And start actively talking about them. It's the most important part here. Now, guys, as always, thank you for watching the video. If you enjoyed the video, go ahead and like the video. I really appreciate it. Share it with your friends if you want to. If you think anyone needs this video, and subscribe to the channel. Hit the notification bell so you get notified every time I post a new video. And if you want to talk to me one on one, uno a uno, just DM me on Instagram at Tommy Bryson. And guys, if you want to watch more videos, click this one right here, or click my face right here to actually subscribe to the channel right now on mobile. And I'll see you guys tomorrow on the next video. Thanks for watching, and peace.